Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at a smart Bluetooth speaker from Sony. Now this speaker is a brand new addition to the SRS XB family. The very first in this lineup to have the Amazon Alexa built in. And just like the rest of the SRS family, extra bass is one of the key features in this speaker. So in this review, we're going to test it out with a few songs. And without wasting much time, my name is Oni. And this is the SRS XB402M. Okay guys, I just want to say a huge thank you to all those that have subscribed and supported this channel. You guys are amazing. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to click the subscribe button below. You can also find me on Instagram at OCMAN Media. I'd really love the same energy you guys bring to this channel over at Instagram. I've put all the links in the description. And once again, a huge thank you to all of you guys. Okay now, if you've already seen a review of this speaker and you just want to hear the sound quality, then just go ahead and skip to the time code on the screen. And before we get started, I'd like to disclose that this video is not sponsored, so my thoughts and opinions are entirely personal. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay now, in the box you get a quick start guide, safety and warranty sheets, original power cords, and lastly, the XB402 speaker. And at the time of recording this video, this speaker comes in at about £249 in the UK. I suggest you use the links in the description to have a more updated pricing. Okay, now let's look at the features. This speaker weighs in at about 1.4 kilograms. From all the pictures and demo videos, I really thought it was going to be a lot bigger than this, but surprisingly, it's actually smaller and easier to move around. I think it's really good for portability. Okay, I think I'm just going to go ahead and power this thing on, and you can do that by pressing the power button. Now looking at this speaker, the first thing that just stands out to me is the RGB light. Now just the way the speaker gently lights up, the lights give the speaker a very distinctive look amongst other speakers. Another thing I noticed is just how tough and rugged this speaker feels. You're still getting a nicely woven fabric all over the front side of the speaker, but right underneath that fabric is a very tough grille enclosure. Okay, now let's take a look at the controls. Now the controls are located at the top of the speaker and they all have a clicky, rubbery feel, which is really good. Now moving from the left to the right side, you have the power on and pairing button. And next to that, you have the microphone mute button for preventing Alexa from getting triggered. And next you have the play and pause button, the volume up and down button, and lastly, the live button. Now, if you're very familiar with the SRS speakers, then you already know what this live button does, but we're going to try it out during the sound test, so stay tuned. Now, over on the top side, you have a Bluetooth and link indicator light, and the link button comes on whenever the speaker is connected to your Wi-Fi, and the blue light comes on when you're connected to the speaker by Bluetooth. Now on the lower side, you have these four dots usually found on Google Voice Assistant devices. Now these dots shows the volume level each time you press the volume up or down button. It also gives a visual representation of the current battery level whenever you press the battery button at the back of the speaker. Now I think this speaker was originally designed for Google's voice assistant as well, but surprisingly, in the final launch unit, we now have only Amazon Alexa built in. Hmm. Now this makes me to wonder if the Amazon Queen has got Google kicked out of the speaker. Now I'm not quite sure what's gone down there, but anyhow, moving over to the back side, it has an LED and battery button. Pressing the button once would cycle through the different lighting modes of the speaker. And to turn off the lights, all you need to do is to cycle through the options until you get to the last point and then the lights will go off. off. And if you long press the same button, you would trigger the battery level readout. Battery, about 40%. Now I really like how Sony has moved this button from behind the speaker to a more accessible area at the top. 
You can easily cycle through the RGB lights and also check your battery level without having to turn the speaker around and open up the flaps. Now I have to say well done to Sony. Okay now moving on down in this area you have a second passive radiator to help the bass response of the speaker and you also have another passive radiator at the front but we'll get to that shortly. Moving further down, behind this rubber flap, you only have two ports. One for powering the speaker with Sony's proprietary charger and the other one is a micro USB for charging up the speaker. Now most people would really appreciate the USB-C port on there, but in 2019, we're not getting that on this speaker. So moving on. Now one thing to note is that this speaker cannot be paired with any other speaker, it's simply a standalone speaker. So if you're thinking of pairing this speaker to multiple speakers then you'd have to just look elsewhere. Okay now moving over to the front side, it has a nicely woven fabric covering the front grille. Now Sony says that this grille was designed to have slanting holes to help the speaker achieve a very clear sound. Underneath this grille it has two MRC speaker cones. Part of these cones were made from a hybrid material. Now moving down it has another passive radiator at the front as well as the back and they both work together as a dual passive radiator system to help the speaker to resonate the bass frequencies. Underneath the speaker it doesn't have much to look at, it just has this nice rubbery pads to prevent vibrations from transferring to the surface. Now this speaker claims about 12 hours of battery life and Sony says that you can get about 11 hours playback time with the extra bass mode turned on. This isn't as great as some of Sony's other speakers out there but it's definitely a lot better than what you get with the Harman Kardons. Just keep in mind that the battery life would always be depending on how you use the speaker, the volume level, the lights and the features that you have turned on. Now another thing to mention here is this speaker is rated IP67 dust and waterproof which is absolutely reassuring for the outdoors. Also Sony says that the speaker is also rust proof so you're going to be very fine around sea water. Now the next thing to talk about is the connectivity. Now sadly, this speaker can only be paired to one device at a time, so you cannot seamlessly switch between two devices. You will have to unpair the first device and then pair up the second device. Although the speaker supports Wi-Fi, you simply cannot use the Wi-Fi connection to play locally stored music from your phone. The Wi-Fi feature is only made for Alexa, so you'll still have to use Bluetooth connection for all your music playback. Now in terms of Bluetooth connection, this speaker supports Bluetooth 4.2 which is great but 5.0 seems to be the standard now. The supported codecs are SBC and AAC and sadly we're missing Sony's LDAC codec on here so if you're looking for high quality Bluetooth playback then you'll have to look elsewhere. But really for the majority of people SBC and AAC are just about okay so there's really nothing to worry about. Okay, before the sound test, I'd like to address the Sony Music app. Now, pairing the speaker to your phone via Bluetooth is quite easy and straightforward. However, I had problems setting up the speaker's Wi-Fi using my Android device. But setting it up on my battered iPhone was quite an easy one with no problems. Once connected, you have all the options to play music from your phone and from SoundCloud. Now, if you go to the settings, you can make changes to the sound mode. But by default, the speaker comes with the extra bass mode turned on, but you can change it to the standard mode or to the live mode. I usually just leave it on the extra bass mode because that gives you the best bass response on the speaker. Also, in the sound setting, it has a 5 band equalizer, which is very good to have. So you can tweak your sound to really suit your taste. But I must say though, the equalizer makes a very minimal difference when the volume level is low. But one thing I really like is, the speaker saves the EQ settings on the speaker. So it doesn't matter if you close the app or switch devices, you still get the same EQ that you've set on the speaker. But the downside to that is, if you want to reset the EQ settings, you'd have to go through the app. 
Okay now going back to the settings you have the illumination control and here you can choose between eight different lighting patterns but the one thing you can't do is to choose a single individual color to remain on. It has to always cycle through different colors depending on the lighting theme that you've chosen but if you're tired of the flashing lights you can always turn it off. Okay, now that's just about all you can do in the settings. It really doesn't have anything complicated to worry about. Okay, now I'm done talking for this speaker. I'm going to let it do the talking. It's time for the sound quality test. So put on your headphones for the best experience. And after the test, I'll share my final thoughts and comment on a few things. Okay, Sony, take it away. Keep going first. I see you, I leave you when I converse. Not today, say. This how God works. Play my position with his giving with no concerns. Set it out. Top in the morning, I'm gonna set it out. You living boring, I'm gonna set it out. Shooting them scoring, I'm gonna set it out. Like soldiers torn, I'm gonna set it out. Son of God, no, I am not son of man. Let's keep falling, the fingers keep coming in. Okay guys, as you just heard, the XB402 really sounds good, especially with the sound stage. Now, I really like the way the speaker separates the left and right channel to give you a really nice stereo image. Now the bass of the speaker is really good and nicely controlled so it doesn't overpower the song but I must say that the bass is still a bit lacking in this speaker especially when it's an extra bass speaker and you expect it to have a much bigger bass response. Now the bass of the speaker sounds really good at low volumes but as soon as you start to push the volumes up it starts to lose bass. So if you're a bass head and you really love a good resonating deep bass then I don't think this speaker would be enough for your needs. Okay, moving on to the vocals. The vocals were really clean and clear and pushed to the front and the high frequencies were not too harsh to the ears. Now about the live mode. I think Sony has actually improved the live mode on this speaker. So now the live effect is more subtle on the music and it doesn't really affect the vocals that much. So as soon as you press the button, it widens the stereo fields. It almost feels like the high frequencies are coming out of the sides of the speaker and the vocals gets pulled back into the mix and it isn't as direct and the speaker adds a bit of a live feel. Now this is really subtle but the effect is really good.
Okay, the next thing to talk about is the audio and video sync. Now, sadly, the audio and video was out of sync on this speaker and it's very noticeable on iPhones. However, on Android devices, it's actually not too bad, but it's still very noticeable. Now, I've tested this out on YouTube videos, Netflix and Amazon videos, and I got similar results. So I wouldn't really recommend this speaker for watching movies. So this is just something to consider. Okay now, it's time for the things I don't like. And as you all know, with all my reviews, I like to let you know some possible issues that you might have to live with on your purchase. So here are a few points to consider. And the first point is the speaker cannot be synced with other speakers. So if you plan to buy multiple speakers to have them play in sync, then sadly, you won't be able to do that with this speaker. My second point is there isn't any 3.5 millimeter port on this speaker. Now this isn't a huge deal breaker. Most people would play music via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi anyway, but I think it's a good feature to have a 3.5 millimeter port just in case you ever need one. Now the third point is the volume level. I've noticed a growing trend with medium to small size speakers not being loud enough at about 50% volume. At about 60 to 70% volume, this speaker is still a bit low compared to all the Bluetooth speakers on the market. Now the speaker does get reasonably loud, but the problem is at those high levels, the sound gets compressed and it isn't as refined and it starts to sound a bit harsh to the ears. And the fourth point is the battery level readout. Now, each time you press the battery button, you get an audible readout of your battery level. And this audio will temporarily interrupt your music for just a short while. About 40%. Now, I personally would like an option to mute the voice and just have the light indications only. That way you don't have your music interrupted. Now, this is just my own personal preference and it's not really a deal breaker. Okay, now that's it guys, the red lights are off and overall, I really think this speaker has a very solid build quality and it's very well made, just like Sony's other speakers. Now, if you want to see a sound comparison video of this speaker against other speakers, I'd have them linked on the information cart on your screen as soon as they are available. You can also head over to the community page of this channel to vote for the comparison video that you would like to see. Okay now, do I recommend this speaker? And I'll say yes, I would definitely recommend it. One is because of the sound stage. The left and right separation is really good and the live sound mode adds another dimension to the sound. And secondly is the water and dust resistance. Now Sony has been really good with this feature on most of their speakers and it's always been very reassuring for the outdoors. And lastly is the design. The compact and rounded shape makes it super portable and easy to travel with. The RGB lights is always a good touch to have for those little party times. But for over 200 pounds, I think it's a bit on the pricey side considering what the speaker offers. But if you manage to find the speaker for less than that, then I really think that it will be well worth the purchase. And that's it guys, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have further questions about this speaker, then let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, then hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you know whenever I find anything new. There's plenty more videos like this to share with you guys, so please stay tuned. And until next time, my name is Oni and this is OCM Media. And I'll see you in the next video.